Okay, I've got a question for you. What are you going to be for Halloween? I will be going as a dad with a flashlight, taking kids around to go trick-or-treating. <laughs> it's time for an October update. Hi, everybody. My name is Brian Ullman. I'm a financial advisor here at Ford Financial Group, and we post these videos monthly to check in on markets and talk about investments and retirement accounts. If you're interested in something like this and you'd like to see more of these videos in the future, be sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of our future videos. So with that out of the way, let's talk a little, a little bit about where we've been, where we are, and where we're headed right now with markets. We're in late October, barreling toward the end of 2021, and somehow this year has been both slow and fast all at the same time. We've, if you've watched any of these past videos, we've talked about some of the weakness that can come in markets at the end of summer. Usually August and September are some of the weakest months of the year. Uh, this year was a little bit different, only in that August was actually pretty good. We had a good August, and September was its normal kind of weak, listless self, really, as far as investments are concerned. Um, in fact, September was our first 5% drop that we had had in a number of months. So maybe we don't even need to look at it. We can be, we can think of it as a glass half full. This wasn't the start of something bad, but the end of something good because we had had several months in a row of positive returns out of the S&P 500 prior to September. So here we are at the end of the third quarter, beginning of the fourth quarter. Uh, in fact, we're almost to the end of October, and we are already starting to see that October is shaping up to be a good month. We've had three positive weeks in a row from the Dow, so we are in, even starting to hit all, new all-time highs on some indices. And so we are repairing some of the things that, was done, that were done in, in October, or in September rather, and we're even seeing it uh, kind of in economic data as well. You can take a look at the leading economic index or the LEI indicators, and they're showing that we, even though growth is starting to slow a little bit, we are still in growth mode. You can also take a look at September retail sales, and September retail sales are still growing, maybe not at the pace we were earlier in the year, um, but we are still moving forward here, and that's a good sign as we get later into uh, the fourth quarter and into the holiday shopping season. One thing that we also have working in our favor is that stocks have been following this seasonal pattern that we that we usually see, where we you know, early in summer things kind of kind of start to pick up with stocks, and late summer they start to, to to fall off a little bit, and then we push higher into the fourth quarter. And so you can see here that in the the fourth quarter historically has been some of the best. Uh, periods of the year, and more importantly, we usually put some lows in in October and move higher in November and December. Not only that, you would think that December would be the best, tend to be the best year for stocks. That's not always the case. In fact, that's often not the case. Take a look here. You'll see that November, historically, is actually one of the very best months of the year, outpacing both October and December. Uh, for, so that's kind of like the highlight, you could say, of the fourth quarter of the year. So it's pretty clear at this point that the short-term setup has, historically is pretty good for stocks. We are in earnings season right now, uh, and we are finding that earnings are very robust for the companies that have been reporting so far, in fact, exceeding expectations, which is also, also helpful. And this is despite the fact that we've had these supply chain bottlenecks and percolating inflation uh, for much of this year. You don't really need to go out and do much to realize that prices have gone up kind of on everything. And uh, I think we expect that to continue into the future. So we've talked about what's gone on in the past. We've kind of talked about where we are right now. Let's look forward now into 2022. And what do we see going on there? Well, I think realistically, we expect that inflation is gonna continue to percolate and that will be followed by higher interest rates. I think where the concern really kind of sets in is if we continue to have this level of inflation and it sticks around a little bit longer than people anticipated, that might force central banks to raise rates sooner and raise rates higher than what was previously anticipated. And so you could, I, I think before I, many, including the Federal Reserve, were saying that they weren't going to raise rates until sometime in 2023. Maybe the concern here is that they would raise rates in the middle of 2022 and not just a quarter percent, but a half of a percent. So why does that matter? Well, this not only flows through to you as a consumer if you're borrowing money to buy a car or a house or or anything else for that matter but it also matters if you are have a portfolio that has bonds in it 
Uh, people who are a little bit older, closer to retirement, in retirement, tend to have more bonds in their portfolio in an attempt to be more conservative and not have as much of a roller coaster ride in stocks as they might have if they were younger and more aggressively invested. But as interest rates rise, it makes life harder for the kinds of bonds that you probably traditionally held in your portfolio, or at least over the last 10 years. Bonds have performed really well over the last decade. One of the reasons is because interest rates have been steadily falling and have been on the ground pretty much since 2008. Well, we're kind of at this place where we have inflation, uh, more inflation than we had over the last 10 years, which isn't saying much because we haven't had any really. Uh, but we're going to have more inflation and therefore higher interest rates to kind of act as a counterweight to that. And as interest rates go from low to higher, that can make life high, hard for the kinds of long-term bonds, both government bonds and corporate bonds, that you might be holding in your portfolio. And so it's in, as important now, more important now than ever, really, for your bond portfolio, for you to review that with your financial advisor and make sure that that conservative side of your portfolio is made up of the kinds of investments that can be a little bit more resilient as interest rates rise. It's as important to be as diverse in your bonds as you are in your stocks. And I know a lot of the concern and certainly the media obsession is with the stock side of things. But many of you watching this and many of our clients have bonds in their portfolio. And now is the time to examine that side of the portfolio to make sure that it is built to try and withstand, I don't want to overstate this and call it a coming storm, but to withstand what is on the horizon in terms of higher interest rates uh, resulting from inflation. And so if you are worried about the bond side of your portfolio, if you, have a, if you have a portfolio that consists of more bonds than stock, now is a good time either to give us a call if you're, we're your financial advisors or give us a call if, we're not, if you don't have a financial advisor or call you the advisor that you work with and, and dig in and examine what's going on with the bond side of your portfolio and what is the effect of interest rates going up a percent or two over the next 12 months. Um, that's a conversation that you need to have and something that you need to look at. So we're not always focused on the stock, stock side of things, but focused on fixed income as well. I th hope you found this interesting. As I mentioned at the start of this, if you're interested in watching more of these videos, be sure to like this video, subscribe to our channel, uh, like, a, like our Facebook page so we can post more of these in the future. And again, if you have questions, you can always email us at info at Ford FG. My name again is Brian Ullman. I look forward to talking to you in the next one.